All right, hello and welcome to Sketchbook Audio Visually. Yet another awesome episode done with a camera rather than just audio, but good news is you get to pick and choose which one you want to do. If you want to just listen to the podcast, great. If not, and you want to actually see this handsome mug, then even better, you can watch video, which is great because for all those who are wondering what the heck I'm talking about on a regular basis, rather than uh, you know just trying to make up pictures in your own head, I can actually show you exactly what I'm talking about. So tonight we have a couple interesting vehicles that I wanted to talk about, uh, and they're not available here in the US yet, um, but they are from an Asian company, and I'm really excited about them uh, because they just look a little bit different than what we typically see made here in America. So stay tuned because you're not going to want to miss it and uh, come right on back. All right, we are back, sketchbookers. Thanks for tuning in here at Sketchbook Audio Visually. I'm your host, Ryan Sketch, and today we are going to talk about a couple car brands um, that I've been really excited about. And uh, one of them is a company that I was really surprised to see them just leap forward and get their cars to the US. Uh, I know in the introduction I did say that they're both not available here in the States and what I meant to say was one of them isn't widely available yet. It's I believe only available in California, at least that's where they're shipping them to. And if you know where I'm going with this, I can tell you their initials are VF. Uh, but we'll get to that in a minute. The other one is a brand that if you know anything about the company, you know that it's not just one car brand under this uh, umbrella, essentially. But this company I'm referring to is Zeker. Now, I have no idea what a Zeker is or who Zeker is. All I know is their cars are freaking cool, and I really wish they were here in the U.S. Uh, the other brand that I mentioned before with the initials VF is VinFast. Now they are a Vietnamese company and they just have some really cool designs. Both of them have stellar designs. Uh, their language is just super cool and very unique. We don't see that kind of design here in the United States. Um, not even from Mazda or Nissan uh, or Mitsubishi for that matter. Maybe some of the concept cars, sure. But of course, as you know, we don't get the cool really exciting looks uh, from the concept cars into production typically. Sometimes we do, but not always. Uh, in one of those rare circumstances, the Nissan Z that just came out not too long ago, that maintained its conceptual uh, look very well. Um, but there are a lot of cars that don't always look quite as cool as their counterparts. For instance, Mitsubishi's, uh, which they did not name at the time, um, Eclipse Cross. It was named like, uh, pff, oh, I don't even know, but it was a really cool looking car and it probably would have done better with the name that they originally gave it rather than calling it the Eclipse Cross because, well, you crossed a lot of Eclipse fans and pissed them off, but that's okay. It's not a horrible car. I had one and I didn't mind it. It was okay. Uh, so let's get talking first about VinFast because VinFast is just wild um i i thought they were going to take their sweet time to get over here to the u.s and not really by their fault uh more or less just by regulations and um things that the united states government tries to impose on incoming cars especially new brands that have never been here in the states like for instance alfa romeo has already been here in the states and fiat as well so it wasn't too hard for them to come back uh, but for a company like this that, you know, not a lot of people have heard of uh, and has never been in the States and is really just a new company altogether, this was pretty surprising. So let's take a look at uh, VinFast and their, I believe, three cars that they currently have. Let's just look. Oh, they have one, two, three, four, five models. Um, I don't believe we get all of them here in the U.S. right now. Uh, I believe we are just getting the vf7 and the vf8 so vinfast 7 vinfast 8 you know i mean they're <laughs> this is one of those things um where it hurts my soul because you have these really good designs these really sexy sleek unique just wild designs and then you just rivian did the same thing r1t r1s they're a little bit on the nose 
the T standing for truck, the S standing for SUV, um, VF6, VinFast 6, 7, 8, City Edition, uh, and 9, whatever, right? And the, <laughs> the problem with using numbers, though, is that you put yourself, you box yourself in, essentially. So if they were to put in another model, they'd have to go in between uh, the 7 and 8 or the 8 and the 9. And then you end up doing what Mazda does, which is adding a 0 at the end. And then it just gets really confusing and nobody knows what you're talking about anymore. VinFast, if you're listening, if you're watching this uh, podcast <laughs> or video cast, I guess, um, do not do this. Just keep making vf1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and just keep going if that's the route you're going to go then just keep doing that but um use names man we have some a lot of names that have never been used before even some that have been used uh for instance avenger no longer here in the states but apparently is now a compact jeep which we need to talk about that soon and we will uh might even do a little tag at the end where i bring that back uh, later in the week for another special episode because the design in that thing is just nuts. Uh, but not to get off track too, too much, let's take a look at the ones that we are actually getting here in the States. And like I said, it's the VF8 and something or another. I really like this VF6, but we'll see if this is actually coming to the States. Right now, you know, it says um, uh, available now at $519 a month. Um, you know, that's really all the information there, but let's look at, uh, I guess I'll just click on one. So, <clears throat> well, I should have planned this out better because <laughs> I was really hoping for there to be pictures or something and there are not. Uh, I'm going to click on, I don't even know. Um, this one says available now. We'll click on learn. That's all I get. That's. That is just so on vehicle specifications. No, okay, whatever. Well, let's just Google. Um, you know what? Here, I'm going to do one even better. We're going to go to Instagram, and I'm going to search for uh, VinFast. And actually, I'm going to click on VinFast US, so you can actually see the vehicles that are here. So it looks like... Um, well, see, you know, they have listed the 6, 7, 8, 9 as being part of what is going to come to the U.S., and that's interesting. We'll see if that actually happens, but it definitely looks like we're getting this big one, which is the VF9. Uh, it's like the size of a Grand Cherokee, I guess. And then the smaller one, which is the VF8, which I guess is more like the size of a Dodge Journey or a Honda CRV or, or whatnot. But the first thing that really stands out is that beautiful V logo and it's got this like mustache kind of thing going on but it flows into headlights that are segmented in a very interesting way there's a nice graphic going around that grabs underneath it but it doesn't form just like one big giant shield there's actually a lot of form and volume going on inside that face and because it's an electric car it doesn't really require the kind of big uh, noticeable grill that an uh, internal combustion engine or an ICE vehicle would need. The grill is simply down at the bottom, and that is for where the <clears throat> intercooler would be. And, you know, there's probably some airflow, like on the sides. It's got the side vents here where air is probably going in, in here, maybe either cooling here or it's being guided somewhere else outside around the side of the car, perhaps. Uh, or maybe it's going on the inside and it's cooling the batteries a little bit or the electric motors, not 100% sure. But overall, I like this face. It's it's a very uh, unique, you don't see a lot of uh, design styling like this here in the United States. And it definitely incorporates that V for VinFast very well. Um, <clears throat> you'll notice that the wheels are directional. They're going the opposite direction. And this is one of those things that's very common, especially with electric cars nowadays, uh, seeing these wheels that normally you would just have a V shape, but they put these little triangles or these little directional things to show you that the wheel is going to go in one direction or the other. Uh, not everybody loves those. Uh, in fact, <laughs> Ralph Jills, when they made this um, Chrysler Portal, he explicitly said, 
I don't like directional wheels, you know, but it worked. It worked out really well for that car, and I'm glad they did it because the wheel that they went with was very uh, dynamic and um, surprisingly sporty. So, you know, good for them. I'm glad they did that that way. Uh, then we take a look at the rest of this um, on Instagram. But the one thing I really liked about this car uh, or this company is is this one, the VF6. Uh, I think it's just a really sporty and aggressive looking crossover, which usually that's not a lot of words you put together. Uh, crossovers tend to be very boring, but this one actually looks pretty agile. It's got some muscular haunches back here. It's got some big beefy wheels. Um, the tires look to be very summer or all season oriented. And then you have this really nice swooping LED signature lighting here uh, flanked by large lightings. Now we've seen a lot of cars going to this and I think what's going on here is um, everybody wants to copy the Jeep Cherokee. Which is funny because when the Jeep Cherokee came out, people, it was polarizing. Nobody knew what to think about the, the what looked like a headlights up at the top and then you had fog lights in the bottom. But really what it was was the DRLs at the top which created these angry sort of eyebrows. And then you had fog lights and headlights down in the lower portion, just like uh, this VinFast does. But <clears throat> what's interesting is that a lot of companies are doing this now. They're, they're realizing that there's actually a lot of good to it. You can have this really nice sweeping uh, LED signature up here that doesn't need to incorporate headlights. It's just an, a light signature for DRLs. Um, that you run during the day to really identify your car, your brand, your model. And then you have headlights that are positioned better than what they've ever been, down a little bit lower than what they normally would be, like right up here. Uh, and then you get to incorporate the fog lights, maybe some turning lamps, whatever, parking lamps. And uh, it makes for a very interesting form. I love how this, uh, the orange wraps around these fog lights and then you have all this black cladding now a lot of people don't really like the black plastic light it's like you take any vehicle and then as soon as you throw on the black plastic cladding uh it all of a sudden becomes off-road capable or rugged and that's not always true um in a lot of cases though like with jeep and subaru whenever they throw that black plastic cladding on you know they're doing it for two reasons one uh, is because it gives it that off-road, that rugged look to it. And typically they push the fenders out quite a bit more. So you get this more muscular haunches uh, like a Wrangler would. But also it just protects the car better when you're going off-road. So um, a lot of rocks get hit those things first and then just deflect off and don't ever touch uh, the body panels of the car, which is nice. You don't want rocks and dirt and mud and all that other fun stuff to hit this. You want it to hit these things because they're not painted typically. It's just a mold in color and, and that's the way it is. But I love how much volume and form there is. This really tucks in and then this kicks out real nicely for this light catcher. And uh, then you have this floating roof look, which is pretty common these days. A lot of companies are doing that. Uh, but overall, I really dig this, and uh, I think this is going to look... So this is the VF6. I apologize. I might have said the VF7 earlier, but um, as you can figure out, the smaller the number, the smaller the vehicle. Um, so then you have this VF7, as it says down here, and it gets a little bit bigger. Uh, on here, you still have this sweeping light signature, but now your opening gets a little bit bigger. Um, this is all painted and then down under here is also painted but it's black so you got a nice contrast and then you have some silver accents down here overall vinfast i think really created a nice identity from not having a grill a lot of times we look at cars and we identify them because of the grill case in point pontiac or bmw uh, we know what they are simply by seeing the uh, split grill um, dodge or ram when they had the crosshair you instantly knew uh, that it was a Dodge or a Ram because of the fact that it had that big giant plus sign or crosshair in the grill. Um, but when you talk about electric cars, you don't need that big grill anymore. You shrink it, you make it lower down here just to run into the uh, intercooler. 
um, or some electronic equipment that is down here, depending on uh, the setup of the car. But, you know, it's nice that VinFast came up with something that's their own. Nobody else is really doing this. Uh, Volkswagen does have some cars where the light does wrap around this whole thing. And a lot more companies are going to start doing it. We've seen Ford already do it, but it's one massive bar. But VinFast incorporated essentially a V into their car and these lines move back very fast so you know it works out really well for them there's a big giant v and they move back fast so that's nice um i like these mirrors even though they're the kind that get kind of tacked onto the side of the door um aerodynamically i believe they work a little bit better uh, but they just look nice they were carved and sculpted very nice uh they're kind of seductive in a way and it's interesting because they're two tones. So you have this gloss black up here, and then you have the painted form down here. And it's a little bit deceiving because if this is all black um, and you tinted these windows, you almost lose this upper portion. And you have this really beautiful uh, form down here, which would have been cool if you know we could ever get rid of mirrors and you just had this nice pedestal thing going on here. I like that. I love these wheels. They are directional. They're big. Um, their hole, their opening isn't too big. It's just enough to allow some air to go through, but they're very aerodynamic. They're really sexy, and I, I like these a lot. Um, back to this VF6. Again, very sculptural, very muscular back here. Uh, you got this floating roof. I I'm, am kind of surprised, though, that this roof isn't painted black because they could have easily done it. It's segmented right here. There's a clean break, and then it's there's a... You know, it's a break right here. So you have this thing that could easily have been a different color. It doesn't have to be black. It could have been white. It could have been gray. It could have been any other color. But um, there's potential there. And I hope that they do do something like that. But this is a nice overall proportion. The wheels are big. Um, you've got a lot of nice lighting graphics up here. You have a good amount of sculptural identity back here. And uh, the hood even itself, it's not... It's got a lot of styling to it, and I, I really dig that. Uh, hopefully, they have some interior pictures. Uh, let's let's see. Here's another side view of that VF7. Again, you have the floating roof, uh, but in this case, they did black out the A pillar, the B pillar, the C pillar, and then you have this little tiny shark fin back here and a really nice straight line that dives down into the hood, and then it goes into that V. And then that V actually has a line at the top of it that goes all the way back. And it looks like it stops here, then kicks up a little bit, and then creates this uh, nice platform on the shoulder. It, overall, this is a pretty sweet car, and I I hope to see one of these things in person. I reached out to VinFast uh, not too long ago, asking if they would be at the Chicago Auto Show. It turns out they will not. Um, which is a big bummer because I really wanted to see these things in person. However, I am working my magic. Hopefully it happens, but I am trying to get out to California to see their studio. And uh, actually, I mean, here it is right here. I want to go and see these vehicles and, and uh, enjoy that. Would be pretty cool if I got to go to Vietnam too. Um, so this is the VF8. So again, we're getting bigger from the VF7. Um, this is... Mm, I'd say it's my least favorite, and part of it is because there's this line, this sharp crease right here that Hyundai's been doing as well. It's like hit or miss. It looked really good on the Santa Cruz. It looks really interesting on the Elantra, and then, then they've used it on like the Ionic 5 and a couple other cars that are coming out. And, you know, it's, it's hit or miss which one and which way it actually... Oh, the Kona. The new Kona is going to get uh, this sharp geometric line that's it's just an interesting juxtaposition because you have this rounded volume and form here and then all of a sudden it's just segmented by or uh, interrupted by a sharp harsh line and you got all that down here as well you know overall it's an interesting looking vehicle uh there's just a lot of lines and i don't i don't know if i follow this one quite as much as i do on the seven or the six the eight overall it's a good looking vehicle it's different than anything else that's in the states and it's certainly something that looks more upscale kind of like uh some of the nicer like the palisade for hyundai or uh the genesis models and yes these cars are more expensive than hyundai and, and kia um 
and some Toyotas as well. This is probably more like a Lexus or um, an Acura in terms of cost or Genesis for that matter. Now remember, these are electric cars. Um, the one problem that I've heard about these vehicles is that the range isn't as great as it could be. And that is a big deal, right? If you're going to pay a lot of money for these cars, and I don't know exactly what uh, the MSRP is on this. We'll probably get to it eventually. But um, if you're going to pay a lot of money for one of these cars, you better have over 200 miles uh, of range. And that's that's on the low end because you could go get a Mach-E, you could get a Bolt, um, a Bolt EUV, the Volkswagen ID4. You could get quite a few vehicles for not that much money and get far better range than, than these two vehicles. But, and here's where I hope uh, it really stands out for customers. Hopefully quality is killer on these vehicles. I have a funny feeling it is, but that would be the one thing that will hurt the company later down the road if it, or pretty soon down the road, if the quality doesn't hold up. Remember, this is a new company to the United States, so they have a lot to prove. Um, so not getting great range is, is one of those things that already puts in the people's minds mm, well what else could i go and get uh, and then it has to work its magic through its quality its reliability maybe its performance and this one says it's got all-wheel drive and 402 horsepower that those are good performance numbers uh you know and i don't love talking about performance uh performance on here but those are good numbers i could name a few other evs that don't even do that and uh but they have arguably better range um i don't know where else it's going to talk about the range so much but what i wanted to find was the interior uh we'll get to i'll go back to the website here in a moment um actually you know what why not we'll just go back to it right now then fast okay so you've got um 348 horsepower on the vf8 okay so right now it looks like all that's coming to the US right now is the VF8 Eco and the Plus. Um, see, only available for California residents. So, and it looks like it might only be lease only or something. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, MSRP is 49000 and 56000 So, in that price range, you could get an EV6, which has much better range, or you could get a Ford Mustang Mach E, much better range. The horsepower though, 348 and 402, those are impressive numbers and certainly um, kind of oust both of those other cars, even the Volkswagen ID4. Uh, but again, it's that range. The warranty looks good. Um, that cash due at signing is a lot. It's a lot of money. Um, you do get a $3,000 discount, I guess. I don't, I don't really know what that is. Um, but I don't know where it talks about range okay so now here's the range uh from the wltp which is europe's um, standard theirs is always a little bit more optimistic than it is is here in the united states uh, so you got 248 miles for the vf6 280 for the vf7 and it doesn't even tell you for the vf8 i would imagine it's hopefully a little bit better than than either of these two but these two, if that range was actually what those um, got here in the States, that's at the lower end of what electric most electric cars are here in the U.S., but there's not really anything else that looks quite this unique, and that's what I think this company has going for it. Let them build up uh, a community and a uh, fan base, and we'll get um, those better numbers. Okay, so right here it says 207 miles on the EPA certified certified range, which is us here in the United States. Um, for all of those in Europe and in Asia, uh, in their home country of Vietnam, you know, your cycle might be a little bit better and that's fine. But here in the United States, unfortunately, you know, 200 is on the lower end. And I would say 200 is probably a better bet than 207. And I'm saying that just because of the climates here in the US and the traffic and so on and so forth but um, a great warranty 10 years is nothing to squawk at that's a that's a good warranty but overall i think it's this it's this look it's the dynamic dynamism dynan the dynamic appeal <laughs> of this car's design language and uh just the fact that it's unique right 
you don't see cars like this here in the States. And I, I hope we get this VF6. I really do. Um, let's take a look at the interior if they'll show it to us. Uh, again, really cool lighting in the back end that matches the front end pretty well. And uh, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the ID3 that we do not have here in the States, but on a slightly larger scale. Uh, I like it a bit better than the Bolt EUV. Um, it looks like it's got more function. It's all wheel drive, which the Bolt EUV is not. And overall, just uh, a really cool look. This giant expansive glass looks great and it really helps to illuminate, if you will, um, the really high quality materials that are on the inside. You've got speakers up here, down here, up here, this really nice brass bronze uh, metal insert here. These seats look comfortable. Um, there's a decent amount of headroom back here. Now remember, I have not been in these cars yet and I probably won't get into one for quite some time, but for now, we have these pictures to go off of and we can tell a little bit about it. Um, there's a ton of leather in this car, a ton. And that looks just gorgeous and elegant and simple. I am all for this versus the Tesla. Like, give me the big giant tacked on screen, that's fine. But give me some quality materials and some added touches that stand out. And, you know, this just looks really good. It's simple. It kind of reminds me of the Volkswagen ID4, but not as much going on, which is great. The steering wheel is, is pretty simplistic, like uh, a Tesla's. And then you just have park reverse neutral drive and then everything else is done here on the touch screen. That's fine. I'd be curious to see if some people kind of bite back at that because here in the United States we love buttons and uh, redundancies is fine if you do it right. And Volkswagen got bit in the butt anyways because they put everything as like a touch sensitive, a capacitive touch everything the buttons the volume the cruise control and it it just kind of got buggy and didn't work as well as it should have or could have for that matter and uh you know i i see that there's not many buttons here you've got a power volume this is probably also like moves up and down and rotates you have your uh, emergency which i'm actually surprised that they have and they were allowed to put the emergency uh triangle down here usually it's supposed to be up here like here or up here or it's supposed to be in the middle on every other car um but they got it down here which isn't bad either i mean it's right there by your hand so missing it would be kind of kind of silly um but this form that wraps around the entire cabin is really nice uh, a lot of cars they're very busy up here on their ip and this is very smooth. This has this nice metal bar here that's kind of like what Hyundai's doing, Audi's been doing, and a couple other car companies. Um, but then you have this metal brass bar that wraps around as well. And then of course, this colored leather. Uh, the black and tan looks great. Uh, I think this is a very handsome looking vehicle. I think the only thing that kind of bugs me is the big thickness of this steering wheel cover. Uh, I, I, I'm just so used to tiny steering wheel things like Mini Cooper, Mazda for the, um, the Miata and a couple other cars. They just have like a nice tiny round thing and big long spokes. Um, but you know, I, this isn't like the most sportiest, most aggressive car in the world. So do you really need a, a sporty, aggressive steering wheel? Probably not, but I don't know. This would be the one area I would try to improve. Uh, I'm moving my mouse in the completely wrong spot. Um, this would be the one spot I would definitely try to improve. Um, and then, you know, that's the back. So <clears throat> what do you guys think? Do you guys like this? Uh, overall, the dimensions, I would say this is probably the size of a Jeep Compass, maybe a little bit bigger, uh, maybe as big as an ID4. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, it says it gets about 248 miles, 237 on the plus, which gives you more performance. Yeah, more horsepower, more torque, which is good for towing. Um, and you get a good amount of advanced safety features. But what do you guys think? W would you jump in on the VinFast uh, train and adopt something from a Vietnamese company? I'm all for it. I love it. 
Um, and I hope maybe I get to convince them to let me borrow one of these for a day uh, or whichever one um, they bring to the U.S. next. Uh, the VF7 is just, and the VF8 are a little bit too big for what I need. I am I like these little cars. Actually, this reminds me of the Peugeot, I think it's the 9008. It's a nice compact crossover, uh, and, and I really like it. But I like all these cuts and these, you know, there's this ledge that goes this way, and then it comes up, and then it goes in, and, it goes in, and then there's a lot going on back there, but I like it. Uh, it, it's pretty sweet. Okay, so we are going to end the VinFast discussion. Um, but before I do, I just want to say, because I, I begged them to listen to my podcast and to watch this video. So uh, VinFast, I'm excited for you. I hope you guys can um, really knock it out of the park with these cars. Bump up your, your range a bit and people will jump on them like crazy. You know, if you keep your price point uh, at a good level as well and then your quality make sure your quality is good and you have a sound uh, vehicle and i am very excited to finally get to see one of these in person one day um I, that is on my list of things to do this year so good luck vinfast and uh godspeed okay on to this other brand that we will not get here in the u.s which is pretty unfortunate because these are also really wild designs and i am just here for this i don't know if this is a wagon or a crossover or what but this thing is just cool it's got these headlights or daytime running lights that actually stick out there's like these blades here and they look like frog eyes or it's very reptilian and then you have your other lights down here lots of aerodynamicness going on and um yeah so the umbrella group is i believe geely and geely has volvo polestar zeker and a couple other brands so here's all of them you got lotus um smart i forgot they own smart now volvo geely and uh yeah and then they have different technologies that they own themselves but um this is unlike Polestar, unlike Volvo, unlike anything else that we've gotten from these brands, Smart. And they're cool. I really like these designs. And we're going to dive a little bit deeper into them. But before I do, we're going to take a quick break. Go ahead, get a drink of water. Use the restroom if you need to. Uh, I'm going to drink my Celsius Tropical Vibe. Love this stuff. Hey, Celsius, if you need a speaker, you got one. Because I have like 400 of these in my refrigerator and they are freaking awesome clean energy i am not sponsored by them by the way let me just make that clear i wish i was but i'm not um you know it helps you burn fat there's just it, the the um <laughs> the uh caffeine <laughs> comes from green tea and, and other extracts that are natural this is just natural ingredients and there's only like uh 10 calories in the can so it's great it's got a great tropical um, taste to it. It's pineapple y, and I love pineapple stuff. Um, no high fructose corn syrup, no aspartame, no preservatives, no artificial flavors or colors. That's great. That's what you want in an energy drink. And there's just enough energy to keep you going the rest of the day. So I'm going to drink mine, come back soon, and we will talk about Zeker. All right, folks, we are back here at Sketchbook Audio. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sticking around and hearing about VinFast. And now we are going to talk about Zeker. If you were here before the break, you heard that uh, Zeker is part of an umbrella brand called Geely. Geely also owns Volvo um, and a few other companies, including Zeker. And uh, Geely itself is a brand, too, so uh, understand that. Uh, it's... Not like Stellantis. Stellantis is just a name that covers all of the brands. There are no vehicles listed as a Stellantis model. Um, but Geely does have their own products. And then they have, uh, as I said, Zeker and Volvo. But if you were to compare a Volvo and a Zeker, you can't. They don't look anything alike. I think the only thing I notice similar uh, similarities is maybe the steering wheel. And that's about it. And that's probably pushing it really. But overall, you have a nice cockpit that's very geared towards the driver. Um, the materials are very nice. There's LED lighting that's very thoughtfully placed uh, in these 
beautiful strips of uh, metal, I guess. I don't know, but they've managed to come up with some really cool cars, and I'm going to see if I can... Um, See if I can find the rest of their vehicles. Uh, it's been a bit of a a hunt. For see, you know, you just you click on Zeker, and this is what you get, and that's not what I want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to El Instagramo, and we are gonna take a look at Zeker because Zeker does in fact have a uh, social media presence. So uh, Zeker. Oh, I spelled Zeker with an E. Okay, is it Zeker Design or Zeker Official? Yep, here we go. Okay, so uh, there are a couple cars on here that I'm going to show, um, but the first one I want to start with is this 001. This is a very dynamic sketch. I love it. It, But it, it kind of leaves you wondering, what is it? Is it an SUV? It's sitting up pretty high. The wheels are massive. Is it more like the Jaguar I-Pace? Uh, is it a longer, like a uh, shooting brake type vehicle? You don't know. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, it looks sporty. It looks aggressive. It looks um, utilitarian. It's got a, a decent enough hatch. So what is it? Let's let's see if we can find a picture of the actual vehicle. And go figure, you can. How about that? Well, this is it from the rear end. And, uh, you know, it doesn't have as quite of a functional rear as, say, a Volvo wagon uh, cross-country, any of the different cross-countries that they make. But it certainly is more wagon than sedan. It kind of reminds me of the Genesis. Uh, I think it's the G Genesis. Um, I'm just going to type it. GV70 shooting brake. So... This is what it reminds me of very much in, as far as form and practicality. And this is just a really cool car that they have announced will never come to the States because Americans don't like station wagons. I call BS because Volvo's doing great. Um, and, you know, the Mustang Mach-E is more or less a little bit like this. It's not as long in the back, but eh, it's got all the one plus one plus one. Right, you have two windows here, a little quarter panel window here, a slanted back, um, not as functional as being totally squared off, um, a long hood, and this just gorgeous body side. People want to see an Alfa Romeo version of it as well, uh, a wagon like this, and I, I just think it would work for all these companies. But, oh my God, Genesis, if you're listening to this, please bring this to the U.S. I will sell my kidneys for. I'll sell a lot of other things. Um, but I will. I want one of these so bad. Um, and with that said, I also would love one of these Zekers. I think uh, the Zeker one takes that Genesis and just knocks it to 11. And the way they do that, I think, is with a more dynamic body side. This lighting is just gorgeous. The two-tone roof, of course, it looks great. And uh, the headlights, which I can't seem to find. Let's see if it's in this drawing no, this is, a new, this is the big SUV that they're, it's this thing that they're planning to come out with. Um, and interestingly enough, um, Volvo might make a minivan too. And it might look something like this. So it would make sense, do a little product, uh, project sharing or product sharing between your companies. That kind of makes sense. Let's see. Um... That's Zeker design. Maybe that's like their design studios page. Is this Zeker's? Ah, here we go. Okay, here it is. This thing, the 001, just cool. And it's a Chinese car, which I'm all for. It can come to the states. I'm okay with it. Um, I'm, I got nothing against, uh, you know, China. I got nothing against it. I hope there's Chinese listeners on this. I really do. I found out, by the way, that I have a large audience of French, and uh, I was trying to learn French the other day, and all I ended up with was like au revoir, which I'll say at the end of the show, uh, bonjour, uh, je ne sais pas. I found out that je ne sais quoi is different than je ne sais pas. Uh, je ne sais quoi is how you say, uh, you know, it's got that je ne sais quoi. It's got that extra 
that um, Zeker has. It's got that je ne sais quoi. You don't know how to say it. Je ne sais pas is uh, how do you say, you know, kind of thing. Um, je ne sais quoi is just that, like, I don't know exactly what word to use. It's just cool. And um, I, I like this. So for all my French listeners, I hope you enjoyed my horrible French. Horrible. Uh, which is also Spanish for horrible. Um, I, I just love this. It doesn't need to have that big functional rear end. This has a nice slope to it where I could tell I could put more than just a suitcase in here. Uh, it's long enough. It's got a big sedan feel to it. And it's just so interesting to look at with these headlights that stick up over the hood. You know, a couple other car companies are doing that. Porsche has been towing with that with the Macan and the Cayenne. Um, Nissan did it with the Juke that they had here in the States and the one that they sold. They, they continue to sell uh, in Europe. Um, but not a lot of cars do that. And for better or for worse, I personally like it. Maybe it's an aerodynamics thing. Maybe it creates wind noise or something. But if you do it right, I'm sure you can get over a lot of those problems. And I will say, though, that this Zeker Charger kind of reminds me of a Tesla Supercharger. Not a bad thing. It's a good thing. I think it looks pretty cool. I would definitely want one of those in my garage. Um, but give me this gray color or that purple. I just love And look at that. That back end, that overhang, rear overhang, sticks out quite a bit. It's like Audi uh, e-tron GT. It sticks out a lot, and it's got this really nice rake to it that says, this is probably all storage, right? And now you can see the back uh, rest of the rear seats. So this is probably slanting a bit, and then you probably have a little bit of a hump here, and then it goes all the way there, and there's probably a little bit of a dip here. So this whole area is cargo. That's enough, I think. Uh, I got in an Audi A5 today, and it's a sport bag, so it's got that um, lift gate and a fast back, whatever lift, you know, whatever lift back. And uh, there was quite a bit of space back there, so don't be fooled by the overall shape of this car. It's sporty, it's dynamic, it's very different than what we typically see, and uh, I like it. I want to see one of these in my. I want to see like all of these in a garage one day. Um, Geely or Zeker, if you're listening, please, please let me, let me drive one of these things. Invite me to your country and let me drive. That would be awesome. One thing I'm noticing that I really like about this car is the fact that one spoke is a different color. Uh, the way they do wheels is just like, just in general. Um, it's an interesting process. You could just cast one sand cast or, um, CNC mill it whatever it may be, but what they'll do to get those two-tone, like you have the black here and then the um, unpainted part with the polished part, what they'll do is they'll paint the whole wheel black and then a machine will come and sand down just in those spots and then cure it with a clear coat. And uh, so then you don't have any peeling or anything else that would uh, mar or damage the wheel. So you get these spot treatments of brushed silver, brushed aluminum, whatever it may be, and then the rest of it's black or a different color. But they took it a step further and actually have this one um, panel painted. Now, one of the ways that they could easily do that is just create the wheel, machine the wheel, and then take a piece of plastic that's in that shape and slap it on, and it either gets glued on or it's like a form-fitting, a snap-on, if you will, and uh, that just makes it easy. That's the way a lot of other EV companies are doing it. Tesla, for example, to have this simple wheel underneath and then they'll just put a plastic piece over it that has a very um, dynamic, very cool, uh, interesting looking wheel cover. And, uh, you know, it works. It looks good. Um, but they do that for weight savings. They do it for aerodynamics. Um, looks cool. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's you manage to have a cheaper wheel uh, but with a cooler design just because they threw on that plastic wheel cover. And it's not your grandpa's wheel cover. These things tend to look pretty sweet. Look at the Mustang Mach-E or the Teslas or Lucid. Um, 
you don't always get those big giant wheels that are like 21 22 inches um, that have a lot of spokes um, you just get like a simple five star design and then they put a wheel cover over it that gives you all those other unique designs and it's just more effective that way uh, plus i would imagine you could probably change those out and change it for a different design uh, which would be pretty cool the lighting signature at night it's pretty cool i like that it's pixelated a bit you get these big blocky lights with this nice long bar and then you get this light that goes up and over that kind of mirrors the headlights you get this double spoiler look that uh, a lot of well volvo and polestar have been doing that now and it looks pretty cool um definitely adds to the sportiness of this car and you know i just wish they would bring this to the united states i think this would do really well um and it's not like they don't have something to lean on they have volvo they have polestar so I think if you threw in another car, car that looks nothing like either of those, you, you would at least have um, the sales departments, the repair centers that are capable of handling that car uh, because it shares something, I'd imagine, with those other cars. Uh, looks like, you know, the car colors that they have are like a black or a plum, I can't tell. Um, the dark gray, this whitish blue silver color, which is beautiful. Um, oh, and you know what? This steering wheel actually is very similar to a Volvo steering wheel uh, or even Polestar. Uh, but I like it. And I want to find more pictures of the interior because that is definitely something that stands out to me is the way they did their... Here we go. So... <clears throat> lots of lighting you can already see there's lighting in these little speaker holes there's lighting here there's a blade of light here it goes up and behind the steering column and then down here then you have all these different materials you've got like a flat uh, tan material down here you've got this quilted leather that's just not the whole thing there's just these sections here that are uh, stitched then you've got your light bar, then you've got a piece of metal, and then you have this long panel of what looks like wood, or maybe it's a fabric, who knows. Then you have a leather panel up here that's also got its own stitching, which then transitions over to the door, and it's got leather stitching. There's a lot of materials going on here, and it fits very nicely. I like how soft and round a lot of these forms are, like even this. Um, this has some geometry to it, which is nice. It's a nice juxtaposition to the roundness and the suppleness down here. Uh, but it, you, it's not overdone, it's not overstyled, it's just simple. The driver has access, easy access to all of these buttons, um, which there you go, look, you have the the hazard um, button right here, right in the center, and it's you know it's, it's right in the freaking center. I don't, I don't know how VinFast managed to put it down over here, but whatever. Um, then you have some other buttons here, maybe heated seats, heated steering wheel, who knows. Uh, and some other stuff but the steering wheel definitely is reminiscent of some other um, brands that i've seen and that's that's not a bad thing it's a very good thing i like the steering wheel it's got a nice big feel to it it's chunky it's got a flat bottom um the spokes are simple long and you got a nice uh fairly decent sized circular middle you know it's got to house an airbag right so, so there's a minimum size it's got to be but uh, it's definitely pretty cool. The logo is interesting. It's kind of like an S. I don't I don't know what it means. I don't know where they got that. So hopefully I can find out a little bit more about that and, uh, and tell you guys what that means. But, you know, everything just feels well crafted. Uh, there's a lot of attention to detail. Um, everything is cohesive and flows very nicely. I would like to see if there's a, other interior color options than just the black and oh here we go it looks like a blackish blue color with white and silver metal pieces i mean look at this this is a speaker this is a speaker this is a speaker uh the company is called zeker <laughs> it's a, a little bit of a rhyming thing these seats are like racing bucket seats that's cool i've i've not seen that before then of course you have this massive uh expansive glass um, I wonder if it does what Toyota and Mercedes um, do. Uh, basically, there is a material or a um, particles, I, I think, of some sort that are electrically charged. 
So once you um, add electricity, a current through, it's a low current. Once you do that, the cells kind of like close up and then create basically like a tint to the roof. So now you can't see out of it as clearly as you could if you turned it off and then it just becomes completely transparent. Um, Mercedes calls it like the magic roof. Uh, Toyota calls it something skylight or one other twilight roof. I don't remember what they call it, but the only thing I don't like about these is I actually like to open my sunroof and apparently a lot of these electric car companies feel like, nah, you don't need to. And depending on the car, I think that really hurts the overall appeal and purpose of an electric car, um, which is why I really like Jeep and love the fact that, no, or and Hummer, uh, no matter what the vehicle, that roof opens up and you get that open air experience. You get to enjoy nature and everything about it because you're pretty much cramped in everywhere else. So why not be able to open that? And, uh, you know, it's, it's personal preference. Some people don't ever open their sunroof, but they have it. They pay the extra money to get that panoramic sunroof. So for them, this works fine. But for the people who actually love to open that stuff up, even in the winter, heck, I had my sunroof open today all day and just rolled with it. Turn up the heat a little bit, put on my heated seats. The air doesn't really come into the car that much. It just breezes over your head and look at me. I'm basically bald right now, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, so, you know, I, I, I like the giant sunroof. I'm not a huge fan of just having a massive piece of glass there, especially, and Tesla does this really well, especially when you have this big, thick, uh, cross member here. Now, luckily there isn't one going this way. It's just right here. Um, Tesla did a really good job of not putting a lot of stuff up here and made this very thin. It does make for a more expensive piece of glass, but guess what? When this thing breaks, you got to replace the whole thing. And by the time this breaks, there's a good chance you've probably damaged the rest of the roof. Um, cause I don't know how else you're going to break this thing. Uh, just overall really like the interior and I think it's a set. Oh, here's a red one. It's like a reddish habanero color. And, and you know what? Overall, this thing looks like it reminds me of the Kia EV6, which is a great thing. Um, you don't know what it is. It's a crossover. It's an SUV. It's a wagon. It's, it's a shooting brake. Who knows? It doesn't matter. It looks cool and it just looks different compared to everything else uh, that's out there. And I really like this car. Now, they did show off a new one, um, and I don't know if they have pictures up here. It doesn't look like they do. Uh, I have pictures here. This is their new one, and where the Zeker 001 is extremely rounded and soft and long, uh, this takes a little bit from like that VinFast uh, 6 and maybe like the ID3 and a couple other cars. And it's a little bit more lifted. It's a little bit more civilian. It's a little bit more utilitarian. Uh, but it's really cool. And it looks like they, they're calling it the X. And uh, <clears throat> it says it's going to underpin other electric cars. Oh, including the Polestar 5. See, there you go. So they're sharing some stuff. And, uh, I, oh man, I really like this thing. And we're definitely not going to get this here in the stage, which, suck, which sucks. But... Look at this fin. It's segmented by um, the lighting and the, the housing of that lighting. You've got horizontal, you've got vertical, you've got slanted. you got a nice sloping roof line at the back. So you don't really lose that much, whereas you, know, you would lose on like the Volvo C40. Um, you just get this nice thing here that goes, still keeps it up pretty high. So you have a decent amount of cargo space back here. Um, but it slants enough to make it a little bit more sporty and aggressive. I like that. I like the fact that there's this big giant triangle here rather than this long triangle that's a little bit more rounded. I like that. It's very different. It's very uh, weird and unexpected. You just you look at the Zeker 001 and there's not really anything like that, but then you throw in this one and it's just like, is this the new design language? Is this where we're going? Because I like it. I love these wheels because the spokes actually dive in, but the spoke tips, the triangles, and the uh, um, these flats are 
they're, they're arrows that point inwards, which is cool, number one. And then you get just these like little teeth. I don't know. I really dig this wheel. Uh, because you can look at it in so many different ways if you get rid of all the fluff that's on the inside and you just try to focus on the five point, this, 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 or you look at just the triangular teeth that are coming down. Either way you look at it, it's fun, it's different, and uh, I really like this wheel. I also like how there's this sharp line that breaks this nice soft curve. So your your reflection, which normally would have just been this sweeping arch right here gets broken and distorted quite a bit by this sharp line and uh it's it's clever it's different it's unexpected uh, and i like that just like this shark fin that's broken up a bit um is unexpected as well and it's a nice look uh this is kind of like an evolution of the zeker 001's headlights where they come up onto the roof now you just have one that goes kind of over the hood over the fenders and then just a tinier one that ends this crease in the hood with a light. That's pretty cool. I really like that look. Um, here's that logo, the Z. It's like a Z that's facing upwards. I don't get it. I don't understand what it is, but I like it. It's simple. Um, it's kind of Egyptian uh, hieroglyphics to me. I, I like it. It's almost like waterfalls or maybe electricity flowing. Down. I don't know. Who knows? I can make a bunch of guesses about it. Overall, I really like it. And um, interestingly enough, I don't know if you heard me mention this earlier, but Geely owns Lotus. So this big, cool SUV uh, might have something in common with some of these other Geely brand vehicles and uh, all good things. Um, Lotus has been just knocking it out of the park with their designs. This thing is sexy as heck. And, uh, you know, I'm overall just excited for this. Here's the Polestar 5. Um, this is that concept. I think this was the precept, yeah, Polestar precept concept, which will be the the five. And there's another. Here's the Polestar three. Um, oh, looks like somebody got uh, leaked images of the Polestar five that it's actually not going. Oh, here we go. Looks just like the precept. I don't think they changed much except for this and maybe a little bit on the back end. No, they kept that pretty pretty close. I love it. I think what Polestar is doing, you know, whoever's running their uh, design studios or Volvo, um, any of their brands, the whole Geely umbrella, it, you know, I don't love the fact that, like, Lotus is no longer just a British company or a French company. Um uh, there's, wait, I got to correct myself. Is British, is Lotus British or French? Uh, Lotus cars. Yep. I'm going to be, I'm going to feel really stupid. Um, yeah, British. Okay. Lotus, uh, and then Volvo being Swedish. Um, you know, Zeker and and uh, Geely Chinese, that's fine. But it, it was kind of a bummer that, you know, they got bought by... And I would say the same thing about Tata, uh, an Indian firm that bought um, Jaguar Land Rover. But the, the good news is none of the cars really lose their heritage and their culture and their their place in those countries uh it's just now they have like an endless amount of money from these chinese firms and that's you know as long as the company's still there i, I guess i really shouldn't care uh and they're they're succeeding they're doing very well and their designs are just gorgeous um i will say that this looks a little less like a a supercar that it did in the con in the uh, concept one and it looks more like a tamed um sports sedan which isn't a bad thing it could be a very good thing it's probably a great car to drive uh anyways so that's all i've got for today definitely check out zeker and vinfast um, if you're in the chinese market or in the asian market where they sell 
Zekers. Let me know how those things are. I would love to know how one of those things drives. Uh, maybe send me a video on Instagram or something that shows me a little bit about your experience with a Zeker because I'll probably never get to experience one. Um, VinFast, I'm going to find a VinFast one of these days. I might be at the New York Auto Show coming in the next month. Um, definitely going to be at the Chicago Auto Show this Friday, so stay tuned because I am going to be going live on Instagram, sketchbook underscore audio. Don't miss it. Friday morning starting at, I believe, 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, that is central time. Um, I will be going live. So that's like 9, 10 o'clock here uh, in Michigan, Eastern time. Um, check it out. There's a lot of cool cars that are coming. Uh, I'll get to see the new Crosstrek, which if you've seen the Japanese version, that's pretty much what we're getting here in the States. Uh, no big deal. The steering wheel is going to be moved from the right-hand side uh, to the left, <laughs> as it should here in the United States. Actually, you know what? No, I really want a right-handed drive car. So for all you folks who get to drive right-handed, lucky. Um, and then I'm going to get to see Dodge, uh, Jeep, and Ram all have something that they're showing. I think Dodge is going to be showing their electric charger, uh, just the ones that they showed at um, CES. I don't think they're showing anything new exactly. Um, Ram, don't know. Might just be the Ram Revolution concept, which is still a cool car, and I cannot wait to see that. Um, and Jeep, no idea. No freaking clue. Hopefully, it's the recon. If they show the recon in a production form, yatta! Uh, if not, and they just show like a 4xe, that's okay too. Maybe they'll show the Jeep Avenger and just tease us and be like, ha you're not getting this because it's only for European markets and Brazil. Uh, and then, you know, screw you Americans and your distaste for small cars. I like small cars. Why don't we like small cars here in the States? Oh, yeah, that's why. Right, because... Uh, people love to have their trucks that they don't actually use as a truck. I probably just lost all of my people, my group of people that follow my podcast who actually have or love trucks. Bye. I, I like the trucks have a place, but come on, if you're going to buy a truck, use your truck, take it off road, get some dirt on it. It shouldn't look like, uh, I don't know. It just shouldn't look like it just got off the showroom floor every single day. That's just silly. Um, I, I'm not one to talk, honestly, because my Acura looks like it came off the showroom floor every day. But it's a car. It's a coopy hatchback car. And it's an Acura. They don't have trucks. Anyways, um, yeah, so stay tuned for Friday for that because it's going to be a lot of fun. And um, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. I will see you guys next week here on Sketchbook Audio, visually.